Ever get that like kind of weird feeling when you're searching for images online? Mm -hmm. You type in, you know, what you think is a pretty straightforward term. Yeah. So baby peacock. Okay. Needing some like, you know, inspiration. And the results that pop up are off. Right. Just a little too perfect. Yeah. Maybe the colors are weirdly vibrant. Yeah. Or the whole thing just has this, I don't know. This uncanny valley vibe. For sure. You ever get that? Totally. Well, that unsettling feeling, my friend, that's the sensation of stumbling upon an AI-generated image. Yeah. And as you know, because you sent in that Petapixel article, it's becoming a real problem on Google Image Search. So let's dive into what's going on here, why it matters, and if there's anything we can actually do about it. Okay, let's do it. Now, this Petapixel article doesn't pull any punches. Yeah. It opens with people, like, yeah. practically screaming into the digital void about how their Google searches are being overrun by these AI images. Right. And they actually use the example of Baby Peacock. Uh -huh. Apparently, there was this whole thing with a fake video that went viral. Wow. And now, good luck finding a real, you know, fluffy baby peacock amongst all the AI generated ones. Oh no. It's unnerving to say the least. It is, yeah. What's really concerning is how this problem like snowballs. Oh yeah. Someone creates a clearly labeled AI generated video, you know, just as a bit of fun. Right. But then it gets reposted, stripped of that context, and suddenly Google's algorithms, they think it's the real deal. Just like that, it's polluting the image search results. And it's not just a harmless curiosity, is it? No. The article goes on to explain how artists, photographers, who actually are ALA on Google Images for their work, right. are genuinely worried. Right. Imagine needing to find inspiration from, say, real life textures yeah. or anatomy. Sure. But all you're getting are these AI images that bend the rules of reality. Right. Talk about a creativity killer. It's true, and we need to consider the wider implications as well. This isn't just about, like, spotting a fake bird, you know? Right. The article mentions instances where AI-generated images have even infiltrated searches for historical events, like um, Tiananmen Square's Tank Man. Wait, seriously? AI images are showing up in searches about Tiananmen Square? Yeah. That's, that's disturbing, to say the least. Uh -huh. Tell me more about that. Yep, it's a problem for a few reasons. For one, the historical event in question is already subject to, you know, heavy censorship and attempts to control the narrative surrounding it. Right. The LS thing we need is more confusion fueled by AI generated imagery. Right. Further muddying the waters and making it harder to understand what really happened. It's like we can't trust anything we see online anymore. It's and the article even touches on that feeling of betrayal people experience when they realize they've fallen for a fake image. Which Honestly, oh. I've definitely felt too. Yeah. But like you said, this goes way beyond just a silly image. This is about potentially rewriting history with AI. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. It speaks to a larger issue of how easily, you know, misinformation can spread in the age of AI. Right. These images can be weaponized, especially in, you know, sensitive areas like politics right. or current events. Oh, absolutely. There's a whole new level of deep fix and we need to be incredibly wary. So it's not just about the images themselves, but the potential for them to be used to manipulate and deceive people on a massive scale. Exactly. Yeah. We're talking about the erosion of trust in what we see online. Right. And once that trust is gone. Yeah it's incredibly difficult to rebuild. Okay, so we've established this is a huge DDE problem, but the Petapixel article seemed pretty skeptical that anything could be done. Yeah. It mentioned AI detectors and provenance systems, but like basically wrote them off as not being up to the task. Right, and it's understandable why they'd say that. Yeah. Right now, we're essentially engaged in a uh, technological arms race. Oh, wow. As AI image generators become more sophisticated, so do the methods for detecting them. But it's a constant game of catch up. Can you give an example for our listeners so they can really understand the challenges involved? Yeah. Imagine trying to identify a counterfeit painting. Okay. A really good forgery. Might fool the untrained eye. Right. It takes an expert who knows exactly what to look yeah. for, right? Yeah. Those subtle brush strokes, the chemical <gasps> composition of the paint itself, detecting AI-generated images is similar. You're looking for, uh, you know, digital inconsistencies, those telltale signs that give them away. Right. But as these AI models improve, those signs become harder and harder to find. Right. Even for experts with the right tools. That's that's fascinating. If a little disheartening, it's like trying to hold on to sand. Right. The harder you squeeze, the more slips through your fingers. Exactly, yeah. And even if we get better at detecting them, yeah. there's the issue of controlling their spread. Right. 
the internet thrives on sharing. Yeah. Once an image is out there, it is incredibly difficult to, you know, contain, let alone remove entirely. And the more it's shared without that crucial context, the more likely it is to be taken as truth. Right. Precisely, yeah. This isn't just a technical challenge. It's yeah. a cultural one. Oh, interesting. It requires a shift in how we consume and share information online. You know, this whole conversation makes me think about another point the Petapixel article raised about how graphic designers are dealing with this influx of AI-generated images. Yeah. Apparently, some are really struggling to find authentic inspiration online because so many websites are flooded with these you know, AI-created visuals. It's a valid concern. The article highlights a graphic design subreddit where designers were lamenting that their, you know, usual sources of inspiration are becoming increasingly unreliable. They're saying it's harder to find genuine creativity amidst all the AI-generated content. Yeah, that's, it's kind of heartbreaking in a way. Right. These designers are ELOI on these websites, those communities, for inspiration. Yeah. That spark of creativity. What happens if those spaces become you know, dominated by AI-generated content. It raises a larger question, I think, about the future of creativity in a digitally saturated world. Right. If we're constantly bombarded with images that are, like, technically flawless, right. but lack that human touch, that spark of originality, yeah. will it will it stifle our own creative impulses? That's a chilling thought. And it's not just about, you know, professional creatives, is it? Right. It's about all of us and how we experience the world, how we find inspiration and make meaning. Absolutely. And it's a complex issue with like no easy answers. On the one hand, AI image generators have the potential to democratize creativity, okay. making it easier for anyone to express themselves visually regardless of like, you know, their artistic skill level. I can see that. It's like giving everyone access to a powerful set of tools even if they've never like picked up a paintbrush before. Precisely. But the other side of that coin is the potential for homogenization. Oh, wow. Okay. If everyone is using the same AI tools trained on the same massive data sets of images, mm -hmm. will we start to see a flattening of creative expression, a loss of that, you know, unique individual perspective that makes art so compelling? So it's not just about being able to spot an AI generated image. Right but about understanding the broader implications of this technology, the potential benefits, yeah. and the very real risks. Exactly. And it requires a critical eye, a discerning mind, right. and a willingness to like engage in these complex conversations. Yeah. It's about being aware of the ways in which technology is shaping not just what we see, but how we see, how we think, how we create. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling a little overwhelmed by all of this. It's like we've jumped headfirst into a science fiction novel, and we're still figuring out the rules of the game. It's a lot to process, for sure, but here's the thing even amidst all the uncertainty and the you know the, the valid concerns i find myself strangely optimistic optimistic how so because this challenge this tension between the real and the artificial it's forcing us to confront some fundamental questions about ourselves and the world we're creating it's pushing us to be more discerning more critical more engaged with the information we consume and the technologies that shape our lives that's a really interesting way to look at it. Yeah. It's not about shying away from the problem. Right. But about leaning into the complexity, about using this as an opportunity to become more informed, more discerning consumers of information. Exactly. And that's something I think we can all get behind. Well said. And on that note, I think we'll leave you, dear listener, with this thought. Okay. The next tea time, you find yourself scrolling through images online. Yeah. Take a moment to pause, to consider the source to ask yourself, what am I really looking at here? Because in a world where reality itself is becoming increasingly fluid, critical thinking is our most valuable tool. 